On July 10, an unmanned submarine found the black box flight recorders from the Air India jet that had crashed off the coast of Ireland on June 23rd. AT&T Bell Laboratories played a significant role in developing the unmanned submarine, known as Scarab, for submersible craft assisting repair and burial. The Scarabs were built in California in the middle 1970s. Uh, they were delivered to Bell Laboratories in November of 1978 after uh, two years of uh, sea trials, uh, uh, somewhat unsuccessful sea trials. Um, when we received them, of course, they had a lot of wear and tear, and they had uh, uh, the problems that caused them to be unsuccessful. Many deficiencies were uncovered, which were uh, then repaired by Bell Laboratories here at Homedale. The submarines were dismantled here and completely rebuilt. Two scarabs were actually involved in searching for the black boxes. Scarab one and two were built simultaneously. Uh, there was a need for a scarab on each side of the Atlantic Ocean at the time, and uh, uh, Trans-Pacific Communications, a, a subsidiary of AT&T, uh, felt it necessary to have a scarab on both sides. So they purchased a second submarine which was built simultaneously with Scarab 1. So Scarab 1 and 2 are identical and were built simultaneously. Scarab is outfitted with an array of tools that allow it to locate, cut, grip, bury, and unbury cable. It has a very special tool that made it possible to locate the black boxes. Uh, additionally, it has uh, a sonar uh, mechanism uh, which uh, can, can forward scan and look for items on the bottom. It can also uh, receive signals from uh, uh, underwater sound sources such as pingers. And in this particular instance, th th that was used, I'm sure, for finding the black boxes. Bell Labs' involvement with Scarab dates back nearly 10 years. Well, Bell Laboratories got involved in Scarab in the late 70s. I myself got involved in 1976 when I was transferred into this organization and I found myself in charge of a group of people designing a submarine. I felt that I was singularly ill-equipped for that job and I was very glad that we had people like Gordy Reinhold to do it. The job was completed by about 1980, 81, when the vehicle was turned over to the owners. And since then, our role has been one only of surveillance. It proves to me the excellence of the engineering which our folks put in to this vehicle several years ago. We have something that will work well over a mile down in the bottom of the ocean and will work reliably. It is a total system, recovery, discovery and everything. There are other vehicles in the world, I believe, which may be able to uh, perform uh, the way Scarab did. They were not on site and uh, so there would probably have been more delay and possibly not the immediate success that we had with Scarab. We are very glad that a commercial institution, a non-government institution such as ours, have been able to make a vehicle which is, I'm sure, second to none in the world and that was able to perform as it did. And I hope that uh, it may prevent such a terrible event happening in the future by discovering what went wrong this time. And I think uh, we can all take pride in, in this uh, achievement directed towards telephone communication uses but which nevertheless have broader applications. Now that Scarab 1 has found and recovered the black boxes, it's once again carrying on cable repair and cable burial duties aboard the French cable ship Lyon Thévenin. Scarab 2 is busy at work aboard the John Cabot, a Canadian Coast Guard vessel. <laughs>